Hi, my name is Mary and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you 10 books that are on my art history TBR. On this channel I'm not really doing, I would say, monthly TBRs because I find them a little bit restrictive and I'm much more of a mood reader. However, I am interested in doing TBRs that are themed that I can kind of hack at over the course of maybe a month up to a year depending on how long they are and how interested I am in what I am reading, hopefully very interested. So we're going to start off with this themed art history nonfiction TBR. The first book that I'm going to get started on is this book that is The Age of Insight, The Quest to Understand the Unconscious in Art, Mind, and Brain from Vienna 1900 to the Present by Eric R. Kandel. Now, Kandel is a neuroscientist, that is his background, and he's published a number of books about neuroscience. But in this book, he is training his eye on the collective efforts of artists and scientists to understand not only the unconscious in the brain, but how our brain works. And so he is taking us from Vienna 1900, I assume that is going to be from Freud and Gustav Klimt, to the present. And I actually do not know what he is going to tell us about the present, because my understanding of neuroscience is extremely vague, and I'm quite curious to know what artists he is going to pull into that mix. Traditionally, a lot of people think of art and science as being two very separate ends of a spectrum, and so it is interesting to me to always find books that are trying to bridge that gap and talk about them in collaboration, because obviously artists and scientists do not live in totally separate, segregated bubbles. They do talk to one another, and we exist in a culture that is the product of their shared collaboration. This is a big chunky book. I think it's about 530 pages before the index. So I am looking forward to diving into this one and hopefully learning a thing or two. Number two on this list and also a library book is this one, Sergeant's Women, Four Lives Behind the Canvas by Donna M. Lucy. Now I have read another book about John Singer Sargent and one of his models. That was this book, Strapless by Deborah Davis. I didn't end up getting along with Strapless very well. I found the way that it was written to be quite frustrating. And so I am hoping that this one is going to be a little bit more my speed and will offer me a more well-rounded portrait of one of the most incredible American and European painters in the 19th century. So I will look forward to talking to you about this one, hopefully in this monthly wrap up. Next is a book that is a little bit cheating. That is this one. The Last Leonardo, The Secret Lives of the World's Most Expensive Paintings by Ben Lewis. Cheating because I have already started it. I'm already maybe about 50 pages in and I'm pretty sure this is going to be a very fast read for me. This might even be the next video that I upload. The thing about this book is that it is about the world's most expensive painting right now, the Salvatore Mundi, which was attributed to Leonardo and sold at Christie's in November of 2017 for $400 million plus a $50 million buyer's fee, making it far and away the world's most expensive painting. I think that this book is going to be talking about not only that painting and the history of that painting, but also a little bit about the art market more generally. So far, I really like Ben Lewis's tone in here. I think it's quite approachable and I am looking forward to talking to you about my full thoughts of this one quite soon. Number four is this book, Vermeer's Hat, the 17th Century and the Dawn of the Global World by Timothy Brook. Rather than being a book about Vermeer, I believe this is a book that takes Vermeer's paintings, Johann Vermeer being a great painter of the interior lives of people who lived in his native city of Delft, and kind of using them as a lens to explore broader history at this time period of this nation. I'm looking forward to this one in particular because I am I believe going to be teaching a little bit of Vermeer in an upcoming course, and so I want to get a better handle on him before we get started. Next I'm going to talk about this book that is Bosch The Complete Works by Stefan Fischer. This is part of the Taschen Biblioteca Universalis editions. They have these books for a number of artists including Vincent van Gogh, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, Gustav Klimt, a, a few others. And I would love to start collecting them because they look so beautiful on a shelf. They are these kind of short but thick books. They're really beautifully made. They have gorgeous illustrated insides. And I'm just, I'm quite excited to get started. And I thought I would start with this one because Hieronymus Bosch is one of my favorite artists. You can see right above this book on that shelf up there, I have two different little figurines 
that are actually created from two of his paintings. And so I am very interested. I can also see a Hieronymus Bosch poster that I happen to have on the wall over there. So the thing about Hieronymus Bosch is that he is an artist who is a little bit of an enigma. He is an artist that we don't know too much about in terms of his biography, just really bare bones, and we only have a handful of his paintings left. So I am looking forward to hopefully the scholarship in here being as great as the outside is beautiful. Number six, let's talk about this book. This is The Orange Balloon Dog, Bubbles, Turmoil, and Avarice in the Contemporary Art Market by Don Thompson. This is not my first Don Thompson affair. The first Don Thompson I read was this one, The $12 Million Stuffed Shark, The Curious Economics of Contemporary Art. And I think it is a great place to start if you're just getting started in understanding how the art market works. I think he has a great sense of humor and it will both delight and infuriate you in equal measure. So this one, well, okay, while this one takes its name from a Damien Hirst creation, this one takes its name from Jeff Koons. And I think Jeff Koons is, to me, one of the most infuriating people who has ever lived. And so I am looking forward to seeing how, whether my opinion on him changes in this one or if Don Thompson is just going to win me over with his delight and his charm. This is a quite short book. It should be pretty approachable. And I'm looking forward to having another recommendation for people to read if they're interested in understanding all about the contemporary art market. Number six, let's talk about a recent buy of mine. That is this one, Boom! Mad Money Mega Dealers and the Rise of Contemporary Art by Michael Schneierson. Now, while Don Thompson is my current go-to for recommendations when people ask me about studying the art market, about learning more about it, I am always interested to find out more and what other people are focusing on. This is a new release. I think it just came out a month or two ago this year. And I am looking forward to seeing all about Michael Schneerson's perspective on the kind of huge, wriggling, very odd mass that is the contemporary art market. Plus this one is just beautiful and I'm hoping it is as good as it looks. Number seven, let's talk about this book, How to Survive Modern Art by Susie Hodge. Now, if you are new to this channel, you might not know that I have read another one of Susie Hodge's books recently. That was this one. Why Your Five-Year-Old Could Not Have Done That, Modern Art Explained. Now, I read this one and gave it its own video review. I will link that in the description box down below. It's quite short. It's part of my nonfiction micro-review series. And I liked it well enough, but I did have some problems with it. And I'm actually hoping that this one is going to be a little bit something different that I think will fulfill my, uh, my desires, what I wanted this one to be, really. This is another... I think probably beautifully illustrated and well explained book about modern art and let me see if I can find one that doesn't have a naked person on the inside. Let's let's go with that. So she always has really big pictures in here and there's a lot of white space so while this book is kind of large it is quite thin and I think it should be a pretty quick read. I'm looking forward to sharing my thoughts on this one perhaps in its own wrap-up. Number nine let's talk about a book that is definitely not going to be a short read that is this gigantic monster. James McNeil Whistler, Uneasy Pieces. This one is by David Park Curry. Now, James McNeil Whistler is a Victorian 19th century painter, mostly a portrait painter, although he did some other things as well. And this was actually a recommendation to me by a art historian who is a tenured university professor now. And so I am hoping that I can trust her recommendation on this one, most certainly. Now, I am very interested in the 19th century and in 19th century portraiture. Obviously, I'm also reading that book about um, John Singer Sargent. So this one, again, beautifully illustrated. The text looks pretty big on the page, so hopefully this will not be quite as long a read as I'm thinking it is, and that I will be able to recommend this one to anybody who is just getting a start on 19th century portraiture and on Whistler's work. I'm gonna wrap things up with a book that I definitely should have read already. That is this one, Monsters and Myths, Surrealism and War in the 1930s and 1940s. This is actually the exhibition catalog to an exhibition that I went to called Monsters and Myths that I went to uh, at the end of May, I believe. And I bought the catalog because I thought the exhibition was fantastic. It was all about how surrealists engaged with a world that was totally turned on its head by 
war, by the different international politics, how everything was modernizing and changing, and how they responded to sometimes their own experiences in wartime. And so I picked up this book with intent to read it. It is full of essays by various art historians, all about some of the great surrealists, and I'm hoping that it's just as good as the exhibition is. I really just need to get this one read. It should be a pretty quick read, but again, I just have so much to read. It's kind of gone on the back burner. I will let you know my thoughts in a future wrap up. So there you have it. Those are the 10 books that I want to read on my current art history TBR. Please let me know if you have read any of these books in the comments down below, or if there are any art history books that you are also looking forward to reading. I would love to know. Thank you very much for watching. Bye!